morning. Good to see you all this morning. More people coming in, that's great. There's seats up here. If you don't mind getting close to the preacher, head up here. Anyway, it's, it's good to have you all here today. We appreciate you being here. Uh, it was, I wish I could stand up here and give you a great report about all the great many fish, thousands of fish we caught, but we didn't do that good, so uh, we can't give that announcement. But we did have a good time, and we, we had plenty of fish to eat, I guess, thanks to Ron Olson. He is our expert northern fisherman, slice out those Y bones. And so anyway, we did have a good time. It was relaxing and fun to be together and everything. So thanks for praying. If you were praying, thank you for praying for us. I do have a few announcements to make here. And, and say, so if you pay attention to your bulletin, take a look at your insert there. We're taking pictures today. All right, we're gonna be taking pictures right back there in that room back there. That is the media room, I think, well, it says Trailside Hallway. Maybe you're over here, I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, you can figure it out where, where you're gonna be. And, and there's a sign-up spot back in the back there, so if you can't get your, you're not, not prepared to get your picture taken today for our directory, then uh, you can sign up back there. And so we'll know who's coming in the weeks that come after this, and so we can be prepared a little bit for you as you come. Okay, and then in your bulletin, it says Sunday School Classes Today. I'm just in, in red there, it says looking for a teacher, an assistant teacher for preschool through K to second grade class. So if you're interested, if you uh, feel led to be a teacher, God has gifted you that way that if you'd get a hold of Vanessa, Bo or not Vanessa, but Jessica Buhait, uh, she can fix you up, all right? We would like to talk with you a little bit about it before you take the class, but anyway, if, if you're up for that, we'd like to have you do that. Also, last week somebody asked me about places where the the classes meet. Well, it's in your bulletin, so let me just read that to you. We're going to, today's class, Answers to Genesis, is taught by John Berkowitz. It's definitely in the media room back there. Preschool, meet, preschool through kindergarten meets in room eight. One through three makes in room nine. Four through six meets in room 16. And all the youth group are going to, I don't know how you're all going to get in Vlad's new office. He moved, they, they switched. Vlad and Jeffrey switched offices over the week. And uh, Vlad's office is much smaller now than it used to be, so I don't know what he's going to do with you if you all get down there. But anyway, so if you're in the youth group, go down there. We'll find a spot for you to meet if you can't all fit in his office. All right, I do not have any other announcements. I don't think there's lots of stuff in the bulletin to look at. Well, let me see. It seems like I did, too. Oh, yeah, I want to say something about the, the sign-up back here, the different sign-ups back there. We have sports camp coming up. And so I, I want you to pray for that sports camp. We, it's our first year trying a sports camp. And so a lot of times when you first start something, it, it takes a little, a little more to get it off the ground. And so hopefully this is a first annual and we'll be having them as summer after this and so forth. And so do be praying for, for that camp. There's some brochures back there for you to pick up that you can hand out to young people and get them signed up for those uh, different things. Uh, let's see, there's a church membership class today and there's a sign up back there for church membership class. And so if you're interested in being a member and you wanna to come to my class, I teach my class down in my office, down at the other end of the building. And also we got a sign up back there for baptisms. And the best way to, to, that we know that you wanna be a member and that you wanna get baptized, when the invitation is given, if you just come forward, shake my hand or Pastor Jeffrey's hand down there when the invitation is given, then we know that's what you want to do, and we'll have you sign up there and give you some literature so you can be prepared for those classes. All right. There, oh, and there's, there's a, a prayer list back there on the back table. It'd be good to pick up a prayer list and, and be praying. You should be praying every day, all week long, for the different things that are on that prayer list. You don't have to pray the whole list every time, but take sections maybe and, and pray through that. There's monthly calendar back there, and there's a church phone list back there, and some daily breads. Daily breads are little devotional books. We got those for you, and so you can pick those devotional books up and take them home with you and, and help use that to help you study the Bible. All right, I don't have any other announcements now for sure. I do not. So if there's an announcement out there, no other announcement out there, I'm, we got some announcements back here that we are going to do, and so we'll have Leslie come first. Leslie can... Good morning. Um, so we are getting ready for VBS time coming up here the 19th of July through the 22nd of July, 6 to 8 p.m. for kids 3 to 12. 
On the 27th of June, we will start pre-registration online, and there will also be a sign-up in the back, so look for that coming up here at the end of this month. And kids who are pre-registered will get a prize on the first day of VBS, so you want to get pre-registered. We are also offering an opportunity for you guys. We need crew leaders uh, to help kids go from station to station. And we also need anybody with creative ideas to come and help us out with um, props, floats, background, or the float for the um, uh, 4th of July parade, and background for our uh, skits and stuff. So if you feel like you are led to come and help out with any of those things, you can talk to me or you can talk to Jess Buhite. Jess, wave so that they know who you are. Or you can talk to Shamine Francis, who's in the back, back there. And we would love to hear from you uh, to help. Thank you. Well, good morning. I've never really stood up here in the trail side and looked out, so this is a little different. But uh, I'm Bill Agents with Timber Bay, for those of you who don't know. Um, a week from tomorrow, for the first time in two years, we get to go on our annual um, Wolf River whitewater rafting trip. And this is a really cool trip. Fourteen years ago, God used this trip uh, to call me to Timber Bay. So it's really special to me, but uh, this year we're taking um, eight area kids on this trip and about four of them can't afford to go and we're taking them anyways. And so we're asking for anyone who has a heart for helping out with this trip, uh, if you could do that, that'd be great. Um, so most of the kids who are going on this trip are new to this trip and so I've also recruited some alumni volunteers to go on this trip as well. So the overall need for the trip is gonna be somewhere in that neighborhood of $750 to $1,000 uh, to get us back up to even for the trip. Um, if you would care to help out, you can see me at coffee time, you can leave it in my mailbox, the church mailbox, or leave it with Amy up in the um, office during the week. So anything you can do would be helpful. Thank you. And then one more little announcement that we are, we are uh, doing communion a little bit different today. And so we're going to do communion kind of towards the end, kind of ties into Pastor Jeffrey's sermon. And so while, while I am praying, now that won't work, after I'm done praying, the deacons will come up and they will uh, hand out uh, the elements to you. Now they get, it's like we've been doing for those new people. We, there, there's a little wafer on top and the juice is underneath. And this doesn't happen until the end, so you don't need to open it up now. And I don't think I'd stick it in my pocket if I were you, but put it someplace where you won't smash it. If you smash it in your pocket, you're going to have a pocket full of juice. So I wouldn't do that. Anyway, let's pray, and then the deacons will come and do that. Father, we do love you. We thank you, Father, for your love to us. Thank you for the, the good day that we have now. Lord, we thank you for all the people that have come. It is good to look out and see so many people here. And and Lord, visitors here, now Lord, it's, it's great to look out and see we have visitors with us today. And God, we, we just pray that you'd bless them and encourage them. We thank you, God, every Sunday, I guess, you have bring us visitors. And Lord, we, we thank you for the growth that we've been experiencing over the winter and now in the summer. And I think all of our snowbirds, but one is back, Helen, Helen Scar, I guess, will be coming back this next week. And so, Lord, we, we just pray you give her a safe journey as she travels and comes up from Arizona. And then, Lord, we're back to full strength. And so, Father, we pray for, for a, a great time here today, that you'd bless us and be encouragement to us, that you'd anoint and bless Pastor Jeffrey as he preaches, and that, God, that you'd bless our, our day together in the communion service that we're going to have. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as we worship.
shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Now comes the time we get to praise the Lord for our offerings. And we, we don't take an offering. It's back there. We have a coffer back there. I don't know if you reckon, re realize that today, but it's a brand new one. We no longer have a five-gallon pail sitting back there with a slot cut in the top of a plastic lid. It's nice. Dan Hinch made that for us back there. And so uh, Dan is, uh, if you see Dan or get to talk to Dan, you want to thank him for, for building that for us. It's a beautiful, a beautiful box that we're, we're putting our finances in. But anyway, let's praise God for it. Father, we do want to tell you that we love you. We thank you, God, for your love to us. We thank you, God, for the good day again that you've given to us and for the life and health and strength that we enjoy both physically and spiritually. God, we, we thank you for this time where we can worship through giving. And Lord, we had many have already placed some money in the box back there and sent it in through their emails and different ways into the bank. And Lord, we, we just thank you, God, for the way in which you've blessed us throughout this whole year. Uh, we are just blessed, and God, we just thank you for it. We thank you, God, for all the different uh, ways in which we have uh, found to make a living in, in our part of the world, and God, you have blessed us that way too. 
And God, it is absolutely our honor to give back to you in the form of tithes and offerings at this moment in time. And Lord, we trust that it rises up to you a sweet, fragrant aroma this morning. We pray, God, that you'd use both the tithe and the offerings that do come in to further the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ here in our community in Pequot Lakes, the surrounding communities that are around us and surrounding counties that are around us and, and surrounding states and on out into the very remotest parts of our world, Lord, as it reaches out to different countries all around our planet. We pray, Father, that you would bless, the, bless those offerings and our missionaries, that you'd be an encouragement to each of them and we'll praise you for it. We pray, God, now again, that you'd continue to bless us throughout the whole summer, that all the activities and things that we got planned, that, God, that you'd bless those times. Bless us now, God, we pray in Jesus' name, for his glory and for yours. Amen. Stand again, please. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame, where nothing satisfied there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. Looking at the springs of living water, Sweet the living water from the hills of God, 
be seated. All right, well, we're going to get to preaching. Who's ready? <laughs> I, want to, I want to let you all in on something because I was, I was so excited to preach the word that I got to, to church here and I realized as I sat down that, that I don't have any socks on. That I was so excited that I got dressed and I just jumped right in my shoes. But hey, socks aren't required to preach a word, amen? All right, well, if you have your Bibles, take them out and turn with me to the, to the book of Matthew. We're going to be in chapter 20. And before we dive in there, we're going to go ahead and pray. Lord God, you are great. Lord, you are sovereign. God, you are righteous. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are the King of, King and the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, we just ask that as we, as we dig into your word this morning, Lord, you, you are present, that your Holy Spirit reign, that it develop this place, Lord, and as, the, as your word goes out, just like it says, Lord, in the Bible and Scripture, that, that your, your word does not return void, Lord. So we just ask that it, it takes root in our heart, Father, and it, and it grows in us and it encourages us as believers to be shaped in your image. And God, we'd ask that any part of us that, that's not in your image, Lord, that you'd continue to prune it away. And Father, I pray for the, for the unbeliever, Lord, that they would come to repentance today, that they would hear the gospel and they would, think they would confess you as Lord. And God, we would rejoice as a church. And Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Matthew chapter 20. We're going to be in verse 1. We're going to read through verse 16. And this is the fourth message in, what, in our sermon series that we've entitled Back to Basics, where we look at foundational kingdom truths that Jesus speaks through his parables. And this one, if you look at probably the, the heading there in your Bible, it says it's the, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. And it's very important that we look at these, that we not only hear the words, but we, but we listen. We need to listen intently because Jesus often would use the word listen to his disciples and sometimes before these parables to indicate that the meaning of the parable was oftentimes below the surface. And only those with the right posture could receive its true meaning. So before we, we dig into this text, I want to share with you a real quick story on the importance of listening. All right, it's about these, these two old boys, and, and, and they're hunting in the woods. They're hunters, so they're, they're walking through the woods. And as they're walking and they're hunting, one of them, he grabs his chest, and he falls over, and he can't breathe. And, his, and, his, and his, his partner looks at him, and he's like, oh, no. So like any good hunter, he's got his cell phone on him, so he, he whips out. He calls 911. And the operator picks up and says, 911, what's your emergency? And he says, well, I, I don't know, but I think, I think my hunting partner, partner, Bubba, he's dead. And she comes back over the phone and she says, sir, all right, this is what I need you to do. Before we do anything, we need to make sure that Bubba is actually dead. And there's some long silence. And all of a sudden you hear, bang! And he gets back on the phone and he says, okay, now what do I do? All right, obviously, obviously that's, not a, that's not a true story. But it just shows the importance that we need to listen. We need to listen to the words that are being spoken and truly look at their real meaning. So let's, let's dig into the text here. So verse 1, For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out in the, early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into, into his vineyard. Now obviously this, this isn't too common to our day. But back in the, in, the, in the ancient Near East, what laborers would do is they would congregate in certain parts of the populated city, all right, and they would be waiting for a job to be, to be hired on, to be paid a, day, a day's wages, and when that job was usually done, their service would be terminated. And in verse 3 it says, And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, Go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. All right, one of the things we need to notice here is that unlike this first group of workers, this second group doesn't have this, 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 this contract where they know how much they're going to be paid. All, all the master says is, I will pay you what is right, and they go out into the vineyard. So they went, going out again the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. 
And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. And when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour. You have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree to a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give the last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose? Do begrudge my generosity, so the last will be first, and the first last. Lord God, you are great. Father, you are gracious. God, you are holy. We thank you for your word. God, we ask as we, as we dig into it this morning, Lord, you reveal yourself. You reveal your, your, your character, your nature. God, and you would make yourself known. And Father, as we, as we continue to dig in, Lord, we just, we just ask that if there's any part of me in this sermon that you would rip it out, Lord, and it would all be you. God, and you would get the glory at it all. And you would encourage your believers, encourage the saints, and call the sinners to the cross. God, we give you the glory through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first thing we need to understand, I understand this, this, is, our, this is our fourth message looking at, looking at these parables, but, but it's important to note that we, when Jesus is speaking in these parables, he's taking seemingly normal routines that are common to daily life, and he's teaching a specific lesson to his audience. So it's important that when we look at this, we don't, we don't try to put something in there that it's not. So it's not an it's not a economic lesson, all, all right? Jesus, Jesus is not trying to endorse some sort of Christian socialism or, or Christian communism, but this parable, in fact, does what Jesus says it does. And that's when we look at verse 1. It tells us about the kingdom. He says, the kingdom of heaven is life. So that's exactly what this parable is doing. It's, it's giving us a picture of the kingdom of heaven. And in this picture, we see, we see two groups of people. All right, we, we see this landowner, or the master sometimes he's referred to. All right, and he, in, in, this, in this parable, represents the Lord. And we have the laborers, who can represent believers. And now we'll see that the, those laborers are broken down even more into some smaller groups. And we walk through it, Jesus shows that some are called at the very beginning of the day. The, the work day during that time was from sunrise to sunset. It was usually about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So over 10 hours of, of hard manual labor. And some are called at the, at the beginning of the day, some halfway through the day, some in the afternoon, and then some at the very end of the work day. And when we look at those, those, those people that were called at the very beginning, from human standards, we would say that they are first. That they were, the, they were the first ones to go into the field. And those ones who were hired in the latter part of the day, by human standards, they would be the last. But Jesus here is challenging our human reasoning and our human standards when it comes to first and last and how it relates to kingdom rewards. And when we dig into it, we see that this parable is all about God's grace about his kingdom grace, that it's full and it's free to all who accept him. Before we, we, we really dig and we look at some of these enduring truths, I want to share what, and I want to make sure we're, we're, we're kind of on the, all, all on the same page of God's grace and, and what that truly means. And in simple terms, we can think of God's grace as his unmerited favor and supernatural enablement and empowerment to salvation and sanctification. Grace is what every person needs, it's what no one can earn, and it's what God alone does and freely give to all who come to the cross. And we look at kingdom grace, I want to talk about three enduring truths this morning. And the first one that we see from this parable is that God gives us what we don't deserve. And to illustrate this, I want to look back at verse 8 here, I want you to follow along with me. And it says, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. 
And in receiving it, they grumbled to the master of the house, saying, the last worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us. We've worked all day in the heat. See, what's going on here is, is, is it's come time for, for quitting time, right? We're all, when we go to work, we're all ready, ready for that time, usually about 5, 6 o'clock, and we're all, we, our bags are packed, our car's already, if it's wintertime, it's warmed up, right? If it's summertime, it's already started to get that AC going, and we're ready just to, just to take off. So, but here, they were going to receive their wage at the end of the day, and, 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 the, and the master, he says, he says, all right, line up, it's pay time. And he says, where's, where's my 5 o'clock workers at? My, my, my 11th hour guys and gals. And they, they're all in line. We're, we're right here. We're right here. And they step forward. He says, all right, yep, come on, come on up. He says, all right, I said I'd take care of you, wouldn't I? I said I'd take care of you. All you had to do was trust me. And he takes out his coin purse and he says, here's a denarius. And here's a denarius for you. And here's one for you. And he starts to work his way down the line. And these workers who start at 6 a.m., they're thinking, man, this guy is generous. Look at him. These, these people, they only worked an hour. And he's paying them the same thing. He's paying them what, what we were promised. If he gets to us, we're at least going to get twice as much as they did. And he starts to work his way down the line. And they get to those, those 6 o'clock workers, and he says, and here's one for you, and here's one for you, and here's one for you. And then the human side comes out. And they say, well, this is ridiculous. That's not fair. How can this be? We've worked all day. We've, we've sweat. They're not even dirty. But we get the same thing. But we get the same thing. But the master replies, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give the last workers I give to you. Am I not allowed to choose what belongs to me, or do you begrudge my generosity? And I have to, I have to imagine during, in this story, when, when, when this is happening, I almost have to think that the, that the human side comes out once again and says, well, you know what, a matter of fact, yeah, I don't think that's fair. I worked all day, I want, I want what I truly deserve. And if they got one, I should at least get twice as much. We forget one thing, that they happily agreed to their wage before the day started. And church, if we're really bringing this home from the, from the context of where Jesus is speaking to his disciples, to us today, if we're not careful we can really th start to think that somehow God owes us something. That because of our church attendance, because of our Bible reading, because of our prayer life, that somehow God is in our debt. But when we really look at Scripture, we see that if God gives us what we really deserve, we are in big, big, big trouble. There's no technicalities that need to be discussed. There's no negotiations that are on the table. Because when we zoom out of, in the context of the New, text, New Testament, we look at Scripture, it shows us what we really deserve. In Romans 6.23, and that's that our wages of our, of, of our sin are death. So anything above that is sheer grace and mercy on God's part. Not to mention, let's, let's not forget who's telling this story to his disciples. It's Jesus himself. And we look at the theme all through Scripture and Jesus' earth, Jesus' earthly ministry up into the cross and resurrection, we see that Jesus is actually the one that d d does all the work. We've lived a life of sin, we have an inherent sinful nature. So while he did all the work and we sat around all day, he definitely did not get what he deserved. In fact, it's the, it's, the, it's the exact opposite. The wages that he was due were given to us, and the punishment we deserved was given to him. 
He lived the perfect life and died the sinner's death. And by contrast, we live the sinner's life and reap the reward of his righteousness. By his shed blood. So the fact that God offers us anything is pure grace. So I would ask us this morning, church, as, as, we, as, we, look at this, as we look at this parable, are we, are we truly thankful or are we resentful with the payment God's given us? Is our denarius enough? Is eternal life enough for us or do we somehow think that God has given us a raw deal sometimes? That maybe he owes us a little extra. God, why are you doing this to me? But when we really look at it, we see that his grace abounds each and every day. And this should drive us to be thankful because he is gracious and he gives it lavishly. And Paul reminds us that in all circumstances we are to give thanks. And I'm not, I'm not going to say, church, that it's, that it's the easiest thing to do. In the storms of life, it is, it, sometimes it is hard to be truly thankful. But I think in those times, we, we, that's really where we see God's grace work. Is that when we are at our lowest low, where we've got nowhere to turn, he's already there. He's already poured out that grace if you've come to the cross. So we should be thankful. And secondly, this points out that kingdom grace, that it's free and full for all who accept Christ, it also shows us that God's grace is sufficient for everybody. So we look at how this parable comes about. We really need to look back to chapter 19. Chapter 19, verses 16 through 30. And in there, we'll, we'll see that, that Jesus has an encounter with a man only known as the rich young ruler. And this man, he, he, he comes up to Jesus and he asks him, well, how do I inherit eternal life? And he, he shows us that, that one, he's a, he's, a, he's a wealthy man, he's, he's, he's fairly well off, he's morally upright, he says he's, he's kept those commandments since his childhood, so we know he doesn't murder, he doesn't steal, he honors his, his father and mother, right? Now as an adult, he probably pays his taxes, he probably volunteers at the local homeless shelter, probably never even breaks the speed limit. All right, this is how good this guy was. And he lets Jesus know it. But it says he went away, sad, unwilling to depart from his possessions and follow Jesus. And at this point, the disciples, they're, they're, they're baffled. And they're thinking, well, well Jesus, if this, if, if, if this man, if, if he... Can't get into heaven. I mean, look at his stature. Look at, look at, look at what he's done. How can, how can we do it? And Jesus assures him of their eternal life and lets him know about some, some, some heavenly spiritual blessings and then closes it out by saying, but many who are first will be last and last will be first. And then he goes into the parable, the laborers in the vineyard, and he, close it out, he closes that out by saying the same thing but in reverse order. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. And Jesus isn't doing this to indicate to his disciples that somehow their position of first or last will, will automatically be, be flip-flopped in heaven. But that rather that, that in the kingdom, that there's this, there's this amazing rule of equality. Because if you really look at it, the only way for the last to be first and the first to be last is truly if everybody crosses the finish line at the same time. And he's shown that the, that the work performed by the disciples, or, or for, for that matter, any follower of Jesus, is transcended by the equal reward of eternal life. And even though the work may vary, even though some may be called to to be Bible teachers or some may be called to be, to be worship leaders or, or, or maybe somebody's the next great Billy Graham who's leading hundreds of thousands to Christ in one single event. Or maybe you're just a, a 
prayer warrior who gets on your knees and, and cries out to the Lord each and every day. We will receive, will receive that same reward of eternal life by God's grace. And it's sufficient for all. And when we look at Jesus talking to his disciples here, we look back at, at, at the context, of kind of where, where they're coming from. They were in a Jewish culture that was steeped in the doctrine of merit. It was, how good can I uphold the law, and if I do so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some sort of special reward, and it's going to be, an accredi- it's gonna be a credit toward, toward my account for good, de- for good deeds done and convert them into rewards for the Lord. But Jesus, in, in teaching this parable, shows that, that, that God doesn't necessarily work in merit or the fairness as, as humans see it. But he shows us that God's grace is still sufficient. And church, I want to bring this point home here. Because I think what happens sometimes in, in our Christian walk is we, we start to measure ourselves against other people. We start to use other people as a yardstick for our own walk with Jesus. And maybe, maybe you were like me and you were that, that, that new Christian and you, and you, and you, came, to, you came to Christ and you're, and you're looking at all these people, all these disciples, and you're saying, I could never do that. Somehow their, their prayer life is, 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 is outstanding and their, their biblical knowledge is just is just. It's way over your head. Which, man, Jesus must really love them because they are, they are on it. They got, they got it together. But no, Jesus loves you just the same. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you are that person that, that has all that knowledge, that that. that that, that, that is in your, in your word all the time, and, and you are just rocking it. You've got a ministry that God has blessed, and you are doing great things for the Lord God Almighty. Well, I want to say amen. That is great. But at the same time, who are you taking with you? And are you looking down at that Christian maybe who, who, just, who just came to Christ and saying, well, well, I've been in this field. I've been working all day long. I've been giving my life to Christ, and they just got, they just, they just got to the party. No, brother, sister, you scoop them up because we cross the finish line at the same time and we get the same reward of eternal life. So Jesus is showing us based on the content of this, of this parable that, that that same basic reward, that gracious reward of eternal life is, is, is given to all of us who come to the cross. And we see it in Scripture, we see it in Luke 23, in verses 39 through 43, but they are the, the thief on the cross whose life of service to Jesus was limited to one act of repentance and one confession of faith. And he receives the same reward of eternal life as as somebody like Timothy, who spent his whole life doing ministry. Yes, God's grace is sufficient. This is kind of where the, where this truth of this parable almost hurts a little bit. Because though it highlights God's deep generosity and his gracious nature toward us as a creation, it also exposes the nature of our human hearts. Because we see that God has given us this great gift, a gift that we didn't deserve. Yet he gives it to us. But how do we react in our service to him? Are we joyful? Do we see God's grace as a, as a gift? Or do we look at it almost as a burden sometimes and think, well, yes, I have this gift of eternal life, but this preacher keeps telling me I need to share my faith. I need to get out in my community. I need to share Jesus. I need to share this gift with other people. And then we get to that point where, where the Holy Spirit is convicting us and we're at that point point. we're like, oh, 
yeah, I know what Scripture tells me. I know what it tells me in the Great Commission that I'm going to go make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is what, what Pastor Jeff and Pastor Mike have been telling me. I've got to share my faith. And your heart starts to beat and you almost pass out at the gas station pump where you were going to share that, your faith with somebody. But if we truly saw God's grace as, as sufficient for all and as a generous gift, man, we'd be overflowing with love. We would be sharing the gospel with, with, with our neighbors, with our coworkers. If God's grace is sufficient, and even though we fail, it abounds. Because he is truly great. And lastly, we see God's grace is free and full to all who, who accept him by Christ's completed work on the cross. See, in the parable, the landowner, he went out to the marketplace. He went out to the marketplace early in the morning, all right, before the, before the work day even started, before that 6 a.m. hour. And he pursued those, those laborers. But he didn't just stop there. He came back. He came back every three hours. He came back at 9. He came back at 12. He came back at 3. And then he came back right before the day ended continually pursuing those for his vineyard. We see that it's, it's God that does all the seeking, God that does all the saving, and our salvation is entirely his work. He pursues day and night at our highest high and our lowest low, God is pursuing. He passionately pursues his creation. And I would say this for the, for the unbeliever in the room today. Hey, God is, God is in the marketplace. He is pursuing you. All right, you may feel like, like you are not adequate, like his grace isn't sufficient, but I'm going to tell you it is. And he wants you. He is, he is pursuing you. He is saying, come on, let's go. You need to follow me. And for the believer, let's not forget who did the pursuing, who was in the marketplace, who came back, and he came back, and he came back. And finally you said, I'm ready. It was God that pursued you. It was God who initiated salvation through all of us, through the incarnate word, Jesus Christ. It was before the foundation of the world, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the, the redemptive plan was already in the works. And it was sealed by Christ's completed work. But this is where it gets ugly. I'm just going to be real with you. God initiated all that. But as a, us, as, as a creation, as sinners, what did we do? I'm in, the, I'm in the same boat, too. I'm not, just, I'm not just throwing this out there. But we said, we don't want it. Because none of us came into this world without sin. So when Jesus got to that point, we said, no, give me Barabbas. We said, I don't want Jesus. We sent him to his execution. We may not have been, we may not have been there in time, but, but, but our sin has done the same thing. And he took that whole payment for us. He took that torture. He took that beating. And he willingly grabbed that cross carried it on his back, open wounds and all, shards of wood pushing in, and he continued to walk forward. He walked forward to the place of the skull. And he didn't fight, he didn't run, he did it on his own free will. 
And when he got there, he laid it down. And he willingly laid his hand on one side, laid it on the other. And we took a hammer, and we just started to pound. And then we moved on to the next one, and we did the same thing. And we hoisted him up for all his weight to rest on those nails. And instead of calling down God's holy army to pour out his wrath on a sinful creation, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He saved us when we wanted nothing more than death for him. And that's truly the gift of grace. That God gave us what we didn't deserve through Jesus Christ. That that grace is sufficient for all who come to the cross. And that it was sealed by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask as we as we really remember God's grace and one of the ways we, we can truly apply that to our lives is through, the, through remembrance, through the act of communion. So I'd ask if just in the next few seconds here, just take out that, that communion cup that was passed out to you earlier in service. And if you want to go ahead and just get it ready. Now I'm going to ask Amy to come up and play a little bit. Now I'm going to pray over these elements. Lord God, we love you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your, for your grace. Lord, that you, you truly are gracious, you are generous, you give us what we don't deserve. God, that you did all the work. God, that your grace is sufficient for us who come to the cross. It takes away that sin. God, we ask for forgiveness. That we would ever sin in such a, such a gracious Lord God Almighty. And Father, we just thank you for, for completing the work. God, we thank you for your broken body and your shed blood. And we ask that we can remember it through, through communion. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in 1 Corinthians 11.23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When we had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's see it and remember the broken body of Jesus. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of my new covenant, is in the new covenant. My blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, the shed blood of Jesus. Lord God, we, we remember your, your sacrifice. God, your willing sacrifice that you would become flesh. Lord, you would live that perfect life that you would go to the cross. God, and even though it's our, our sin that sent you there, God, you would, you would tell the Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God, we love you. We thank you for that act. God, we, we, we thank you for the, the service you have called us to in your, in your almighty name. God, that some of us maybe have come at, at the 6 a.m. hour. Some of us maybe come at 9, maybe at noon, maybe at 3. Lord, and some of us will be coming that last hour. But God, we thank you for you even calling us. We, 
know that there's, Lord, you love us all the same. Now that that eternal reward of, of eternal life is full and free to all who come to the cross. God, so we give you thanks, we give you praise. Father, we worship you for who you are. Lord, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to close out our service, but we're going to do it a little differently, and we're going to sing one last song, and we're just going to worship God. We're going to worship the Lord God Almighty. And I'm not going to break it for an invitation. Amy's just going to play. We're going to sing, and myself and Lexi will be up here if anybody wants to pray. The altar's open. You can come. And Vlad and Anna will be in the back. And that's just somebody to pray with. Somebody to say, man, God is great. And for them to say, amen, amen, he is. But as we sing, if you feel called, if the Holy Spirit's leading, the altar's open. You can pray with one of our, 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 our prayer team members because we'd, be lo- we'd love to pray with you. And as we do, as we sing, if you're, if you're maybe just rejoicing that, that, that God is gracious, that he has really given us a gift that, that we don't deserve, then I tell you, come, come celebrate. It got me so excited, I didn't even put socks on this morning. Or maybe you don't know Jesus at all, and you're thinking to yourself, I need some of that grace. I tell you, God's already pursuing you. He's in the market. All you got to do is let him know you're here. Let's go ahead. Let's worship, church. i
Lord God, you are wonderful. God, you are sovereign. You are great. God, we just love you. We thank you. Lord, we just ask that as we go about our week, Father, that you go with us, you go before us, your Holy Spirit reign. Father, and you are great. Help us be bold and courageous, Lord, to walk out our faith each and every day. And God, you reign holy now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.